I am aware that according to some, the alleged Ocean Gate Titan transcript has been proven to be a fake. In today's world where people seem to automatically assume everything is fake, I will be the one who does not jump to conclusions so quickly. Humor me for a few minutes and I will present you with a reasonable scenario illustrating how they could have easily descended too quickly. So how could the Ocean Gate Titan submersible have been descending too fast? It appears to be something that could happen relatively easily. Their system of ballast, which was originally steel pipes, was apparently augmented with lead weights. Judging by what I can see in various pictures of the sub with these lead weights attached, they appear to be approximately six inches by six inches by two and a half inches in size and were sort of a U-shape so that they could just sit on top of the skid. One cubic inch of lead equals a quarter pound and at 108 cubic inches for one of these lead weights, they would be somewhere around 25 pounds each. Seems like a nice round number. From the pictures and videos that I have seen, the number of these weights varied. It appears that they would normally have four or so on the ballast cage under the belly and anywhere from four to eight of them on the skid. So the amount of ballast apparently could easily vary between one and 200 pounds or maybe even more. In some of these pictures, I've seen up to six weights on each of the skids, which would be 300 pounds. It seemed to vary a lot. I would imagine that they thought of this as a modular system and added or removed weight is required by calculating the total weight of the crew so that they would have a safe descent time of approximately two and a half hours. When at depth, they dropped some weight to achieve neutral buoyancy. When done with the descent, they would drop the rest of the weights on the ballast cage and then start slowly ascending, now being positively buoyant. It seems like this would be something that could be very easily overlooked. Perhaps they made a descent that day with 100 pounds or more of extra ballast and the person responsible for this made a miscalculation. Or they just simply forgot about it because they were busy with other things. Or maybe someone called in sick that day. According to the transcript, they had made it to 3,476 meters in only 90 minutes and then the decision was made to release the ballast. This was still not enough, so a decision was made to jettison the frame. Multiple attempts were needed to do so and then when they were apparently finally ascending, they found out they were going much too slowly. Shortly thereafter, the implosion occurred. This is what leads me to believe that the frame, which I assume means the legs and the weight carriage, failed to completely detach. The debris video also clearly shows one of these legs missing. Whether or not that directly led to the failure of the hole or not is up for debate. So just how much weight would all of these components add it up to? This led me to think about just how much the legs and the weight carriage may have weighed. I mean, if all that stuff was detached, they should have been able to make a fairly rapid ascent, right? It would be much more positively buoyant than normal. I surmise that they could have dropped five or 600 pounds, maybe even more, if everything worked as it should. Of course, I have to estimate just how much weight all this stuff added up to, but I think my estimates are probably reasonable. I'll start with the easy stuff first. The lead weights on the skid seem to average at two per skid. That would be equivalent to 100 pounds. The weight of the skids themselves and the parts that attach them to the legs, I'd guess, were at least 50 pounds each. So there's another 100 pounds. The two sets of legs with the large cross member that attach them together under the hull, along with the brackets that attach all these pieces together, look fairly substantial. I'm guessing that those were maybe 150 pounds each. We are now at 500 pounds. Dropping the ballast attached to the ballast cage would be somewhere around another 100 pounds. In reality, the total weight could have been even more. So in theory, they should have been able to quickly drop at least 600 pounds. It might not seem like a lot of weight compared to a submersible that weighed 21,000 pounds, but this is the difference between dropping neutral buoyancy, positive buoyancy, and even more positive buoyancy. In the end, nothing will change the fact that the hole failed and that a very violent implosion occurred, instantly killing all on board. But could it have been prevented? Stockton Rush actually patented a system of acoustic sensors and strain gauges that would function as a real-time monitoring system, also known as RTM, that in theory would prevent this kind of disaster from happening. In the transcript, the statement global RTM alert active all red would seem to indicate that a whole breach was imminent. 
If that is a fact, unfortunately, their emergency measures just weren't enough to save them. Imagine that the sensors you personally patented are telling you that you're about to die. Rush and his engineers, I would think, should have known that when carbon fiber fails, it does so suddenly and catastrophically, and usually with little or no warning. Beyond all of that, it could come down to a simple human error made at the surface before the sub even got into the water. I know, you're thinking, none of this would have happened if the hole wasn't made of carbon fiber, and that may be true, but I simply wanted to point out how easy it would be to get the ballast wrong, resulting in too quick of a descent, which resulted in being at too great of a depth to be able to do much about it when at a most critical juncture.